welcome to our 2021 Lotus Laureate graduation ceremony. My name is Lynn and I am currently serving as APASA's student staff. Hello everyone, I am Lady Elliot and I am a student leader serving as the outgoing vice president of the Filipino American Student Association and an APASA student staff. Before we officially begin, I would like to introduce APASA director, Kenny Importante. Kenny joined APASA in January, 2018. Previously, he served as assistant director of Asian American Cultural Center at University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Born in the Philippines, Kenny immigrated to California when he was 10 years old. He brings with him his experience working residential life and cultural centers from the West Coast, East Coast, and the Midwest. To start us off, he will offer a land acknowledgement. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, Lady, for your kind introductions. Colleagues, students, and members of the community, I want to acknowledge our space and the land where we are gathered today. Here in Tucson and the University of Arizona stands on the grounds of indigenous land that the Ana Otham nation and their neighbors, Pasco Yaqui tribe. I also want to acknowledge APASA's relationship to the indigenous community here on campus. APASA, where we are currently, is in the space that was originally intended for the Native American Student Affairs Cultural Center. APASA was invited by the then director of NASA in 2009 uh, to share their space at the Nugent Building during the time that budget cuts were happening across the institution. Many years later, the partnership between APASA and NASA are strong, and we thank the staff for allowing us to share the space here at Nugent. We offer our sincerest gratitude to the indigenous community sharing their sacred place for us to have here, pursuing our degrees, and as members of the University of Arizona as a place for higher education. We are excited to celebrate and recognize graduating Asian Pacific Islander, Daisy American scholars on their accomplishments and graduation at the University of Arizona. Additionally, we are also here to recognize the recipients for this year's Leadership Award Ceremony. As the Asian Pacific Islander, Daisy American Apita community, we honor our heritage through traditions, hard work and family. This year, however, our community has faced numerous challenges with a recent rise in hate crimes and bias that have been further heightened and highlighted during this pandemic. As we navigate the uncertainty of the world today and the hatred shown towards our APITA community, how do you honor your heritage? How do we redefine our visibility? We advocate for change. We demand for our voices to be heard. We push to redefine our visibility by honoring our heritage through our history and narratives. We debunk, unpack, and shatter the bamboo ceiling, remodel the minority myth, and dare to chase our dreams. As a community, we pushed for new initiatives, such as our Living Learning Community, APITA Scholars, Stop Asian Hate Panels, and the newly implemented Asian Pacific American Studies minor. To our graduates in this call, during your time at the University of Arizona, we acknowledge your journey. We know at times you were pushed outside of your comfort zone. Today and every day, we celebrate you. As you leave this institution and move on to bigger and brighter ventures in your life, we ask you to reflect on your heritage and redefine your voice once you leave the University of Arizona. It is time to celebrate joy and pride in the APITA community. You are the pride. You are the joy. You are the future of this community. Let us give a round of applause to our graduates. At this moment, I would like to introduce Ms. Ivy Banks, Associate Vice Provost for Diversity and Inclusion to provide welcome remarks for today's celebration. Ms. Banks joined the University of Arizona from Northern Arizona University where she serves as Assistant Vice President, Student Affairs Engagement and Inclusive Excellence in September 2020. In this capacity, she currently leads initiatives to unify academic and student affairs engagements 
through targeted messaging, using predictive analytic systems, and aligning efforts to enhance support around first year, first gen students of color. A proud first generation student herself, Ms. Banks earned a Juris Doctor from University of Akron School of Law, a Master's of Education degree in Educational Leadership Community College Higher Education from Northern Arizona University, is working currently on a Master's of Education in Learning Design and Technologies from Arizona State University, and completed a Bachelor's degree in Political Science from Cleveland State University. She is an active member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, which is one of the four historically African-American sororities. Let us welcome Ms. Ivy Banks. Thank you so much, lady. It is an absolute honor to be here among you as you celebrate this historic achievement. I want to first think, uh, take a moment to give my thanks and amazing congratulations, not only to the graduates, but also for our PASA team, from our student workers to our coordinators and to our amazing director, Kenny Rampartante, and your achievements in launching a virtual convocation to celebrate our graduates. You know, when I was young, I was afraid of the dark. It was unknown, it was uncertain, and I think I, I had a lot of anxiety because I didn't know what to expect. So when I was young, my father bought me a nightlight um, and that nightlight was able to quell some of my fears. And so as you are working and or as you are acknowledging and launching your next career and your next chapter in your life, I hope that you know that you have the requisite tools and you are ready to step into the unknown as you accept your cultural stole and identity honors today and your degree over the next few days, you may be filled with that same fear of the unknown, uncertainty, and also questions about what to expect. But know that you, like no other graduates in history, are more prepared to walk into the next chapter of your life with confidence, knowing that you were resilient through a national pandemic that you achieve despite unprecedented hate towards our Akita community, violence and discrimination, that you achieve despite interruptions in your education where you're forced into a virtual world and you, expel, you excelled despite every odd and every barrier. You said that not even a national pandemic, civil unrest, or impacts from a country still grappling with social injustice and hate will stop you. You are resilient. You are members of the APEDA graduating community that is destined to impact and elevate our world in engineering, science, arts, history, political science, business, cultural studies, nursing, agriculture, and so many more areas. Your Wildcat family, the amazing APASA staff and the Office of Diversity and Inclusion are so incredibly proud of you. We wish you a heartfelt congratulations as you switch your tassel this weekend and hope that we will see you in the near future serving as a mentor, guide, or friend to APITA students that will follow in your legacy of excellence, resilience, and grit. Once again, we commend you on your amazing accomplishment and achieving that despite all of the odds, all of the barriers. And during that time, not only amplifying your voice, but ensuring that your legacy has impacted the University of Arizona. And we are going into the next year with more awareness, acknowledgement and allyship around issues impacting the APEDA culture and community and we will not only um, have a community of allies, but we will also understand and be able to elevate the voice of our PETA community given our new minor in Asian American studies. You did that. You made these accomplishments and we are so grateful for your legacy. Congratulations and best wishes on the next chapter of your life. Before we honor this year's graduates, we would like to take this opportunity to also honor individuals that are part of APASA's Leadership Awards. In previous years, the Leadership Awards Banquet was held in person and separate from the Lotus Laureate Ceremony. For the next 10 minutes, we will announce the winners who were nominated this year. 
Hello, my name is Christy Pham. I'm an APASA intern. And the first category we would like to announce is the Emerging Student Leader. This award goes to the student whose contributions have furthered the advancement of APITA students on campus. This up and coming student has demonstrated potentials for future contributions to student organizations, campus community, and to the APITA populations. Nominators of this student row. This nominee has demonstrated compassion, great understanding, and a heightened sense of responsibility in all that she does for multiple student organizations, such as Red Cross Club, FASA, and Pre-Health of PAMSA. She ran and was re-elected as ASCUA Senators at Large after being established as the underdog of the year. This encourages her role to push past what is expected and rockets the team to go above and beyond. This leader is incredibly kind and personable to all she needs. I believe a leader is one who sets high expectations for themselves and strives to go above and beyond those expectations while also encouraging others around them to achieve similar successes. The student exudes this mentality and her confidence permeates into every work, every room she walks into. Please join me into congratulating Lady Elia as this year's recipient of Emerging Student Leader. As I accept this award, I look back to the last two years that I have been at the University of Arizona. And all I can say is maraming salamat, which is thank you in Filipino. Thank you to my parents for always challenging me to become a better version of myself each and every day. To Ryan Inovejas, Fabi, Harley Quinn, Diane, and Tia, thank you for believing in me and seeing an emerging student leader in me. I'll continue to make you all proud. Thank you to Ate Diane and Ate Tia once more, as well as my kapatids Jada and Fabi for always making me feel at home in college and shaping me to become the student leader that I am today. Thank you to Kenny and the APASA staff for organizing this whole event and continuously highlighting the APITA community at the University of Arizona. And finally, to my FASA familia, thank you for making college fun, exciting, and enjoyable. Thank you for trusting and supporting me as your vice president for this past academic year. Once again, I am Lady Elia, a first generation immigrant and college student standing in front of you today and accepting this Emerging Student Leader Award. I will try my best to be worthy of this award and make my APITA community proud. Thank you and congratulations to our graduates. Hello everyone, my name is Uju Sampson and I serve as the graduate assistant for APASA. The next award is the Established Leader Award. This award recognizes juniors and seniors with the outstanding leadership and active participation in their affiliated organizations. They are able to bind, to build positive relationships with others and stand as role models and mentors for APASA members and the APITA community. This person has provided vision and guidance for their organization and made a positive impact in the APOS community and University of Arizona campus community. Additionally, she serves as the second inaugural resident assistant for APOS's APITA Scholars theme community. According to her nominators, Diane deserves this award as she dedicated a lot of time and effort to supporting the advancement of Pre-Health APAMS's mission and goals and to the APITA community at UA. Throughout her undergraduate career, Diane has been involved in numerous leadership roles, as well as balancing her curricular schedule that not many people can handle. I have seen firsthand her abilities to foster learning environments and her genuine, genuine concern for giving others the tools to excel and become leaders themselves. She is also one of the hardest working people I know, and much of what she does is always with purpose. Diane has advocated for the health and wellness of the APITA community and her peers by initiating and participating in health related events and has also participated in Asian American activism through the APASA Center. Further, her outreach goes beyond the APOS community, where she has helped forge initiatives such as Be The Match and creating COVID care packages that will be sent to communities in need in, in Tucson. I believe that her commitment to our community while balancing jobs, internships, student or commitments, and academics is deserving to be recognized as this year's established student leader. This year's established leader award goes to 
Diane Saez, congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. I am humbled to receive a PASA's Established Student Leader Award this year. This award extends to my peers who came before me as they have cultivated my person, to my fellow student leaders in which we have cultivated a legacy of perseverance and compassion, to my mentors that have offered the utmost guidance every step of the way, and to my parents, my everlasting role models. Thank you. Marami salamat. The next category is the Outstanding Faculty and Staff Award. Um, and thank you, Diane, for um, being able to dedicate your throughout your four years here at this university to the Akita community as well. Um, going back to the Outstanding Faculty and Staff Award, this award is given to one faculty and st or staff member at the University of Arizona who has contributed to the success and advancement of students and student organizations in the APIDA community. The nom this nominee has worked hard to ensure that the current instances of hate towards Asian individuals throughout the nation are acknowledged and condemned by the university administration. In particular, this nominee raised these concerns to the College of Science Interim Dean Elliot Chu to push for a statement. She also pushed for a statement condemning these acts of hate from the astronomy department and was a co-signatory of the resultant statement alongside the astronomy director. Beyond official statements, this nominee has shown up for her students with direct action by hosting a department town hall on COVID anxieties, racial injustice, and anti-Asian hate. Her town hall conversation led to the formation of the International Scholars Task Force and stepped up as a faculty representative. As a member of the Steward Diversity and Inclusive, Inclusiveness Committee, she has been a vital voice and advocate for international scholars, particularly for the APIDA community to address international scholar specific concerns and the racial divide that existed in both social and academic circles of the astronomy department. Her founding of the allyship program in this task force creates a safety network for an incoming international students to connect with department resources and mentorship. This year's outstanding faculty and staff award goes to Dr. Jin Young, Serena Kim, congratulations. Thank you, is it right time to speak? Yeah, so I <laughs> thank you very much uh, uh, to APASA for giving me this award. And I'm really deeply honored. And I would like to thank the students and postdocs and my colleagues who nominated me for this award. And also to my family members who are very supportive. Um, what have been described, we did it all together. Uh, there were various programs and um, a lot of effort going on to protect and edge and community. And um, there were so much support. Uh, so I have been working with um, a lot of students and colleagues for two diversity, equity, and inclusion committees, and one so day that's a task force organized by students in my department. And um, there's one in College of Science DI committee. I'm I, I'm really thankful for all of them um, for, because I learned a lot by working with them together, and we achieved all those together. So. Um, Working together uh, with these students and postdocs and the colleagues really made me feel like empowered and not alone. And in this very challenging and difficult time, it was very hopeful and healing. So I will keep working together with these students and the UA community and College of Science. And I wish you all healing summer and feel that you're not alone and thank you congratulations to all graduates and i would end with um thank you in korean komapsunida thank you so much hello everyone my name is harley quinn alonzo and i'm currently the graduate assistant for pasa the next award to be presented is the outstanding student organization award this award recognizes a student org that has contributed to the issues and needs of APASA students 
and underrepresented populations on campus, as well as creating a community that enforces the importance of teamwork and communication. This organization contributes to the positive developments of its members and supports other campus events and student orgs. As we all know, teamwork makes the dream work. So without further ado, this year's Outstanding Student Organization Award goes to Underscore. Congrats on such a successful year. Accepting the awards on behalf of Underscore are Jenna Vasquez and Kobe Saldana. Hello everyone, I'm Kobe Saldana, the Artistic Director of Underscore. Special thanks to those who nominated us, especially our current, former, and future team members and fam family members for all the support you all have given us. Without you all, we as a team wouldn't be who we are today. Um, and we cherish everything that you guys do done for us, all the support that you have given us these past four years. Um, and so on behalf of all underscore seniors, we would like to thank the team for all the memories we have been blessed with from late night dance practices to performance road trips um, out of Tucson to late night filmings and performances at the McHale Center, as we all know. Um, and yeah, those are the memories that we're gonna cherish for the rest of our lives after graduation. And so thank you again for this award. It really is a humble experience. Speaking on behalf of all of underscore today and um, we'll go ahead and pass it on to Jenna. Hi everyone, my name is Jenna Vasquez and I am the executive director of Underscore. And I'm just gonna say a quick few words to just sum up Underscore as a whole. And Underscore is where we were encouraged to break the status quo and define ourselves as we choose. Where a STEM major can cook up some mean choreography or where a business major could break down on the dance floor. Underscore is in, in yep. Underscore has introduced us to friends that we will all keep for the rest of our lives. And I guess that means that we are really all in this together because once a wildcat, always a wildcat. Thank you everyone for this award and the people who nominated us. Thank you, Underscore. At this time, we would like to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Jonathan Jayon Chrisman. Dr. Chrisman is an artist and urban scholar whose work considers the intersections between culture, politics, and place. His book, Urban Humanities, New Practices for Reimagining the City, stakes out new disciplinary terrain for the humanities. His current research focuses on the role that art and culture can play as forms of political engagement in gentrifying cities with a particular focus on the historic arts-based activism in the Japanese American neighborhood of Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. He is an assistant professor of public and applied humanities at the University of Arizona, with courtesy appointments in architecture, art, geography, and urban planning, and part of the core faculty for the newly established program in Asian Pacific American Studies. And now, without further ado, please help me welcome Dr. Jonathan Jayon Chrisman. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, yeah, and thank you, everyone, for the invitation to, to speak. Uh, greetings. Yes, my name is. Jonathan Jayon Christman, and I am the son of a Korean immigrant born and raised in Fresno, California, a place that is not too dissimilar from Tucson. I am a professor in the College of Humanities, and if we have any transfer students here, we may have actually started at the University of Arizona at about the same time in 2019. It shocks me to think that it has already been two years since then. And if you were thinking that you're two or four or more years here, have gone by in the blink of an eye, well, I have a few thoughts to share. But first, I want you to do a quick visualization exercise, if you can indulge me. I want you to think of a specific memory from your time here at the U of A, one that makes you happy. I want you to hold it in your mind just for a little bit. Uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, back to business. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. And also, congratulations to the parents and families of our graduates. You've made it through years of classes, exams, papers, and deadlines, through a period in your life where you, you have matured into people with rich identities and passions that you've nurtured through clubs, friends, and activities. You've figured out adulting as you've had to live on your own and figure out things like the very important and real differences between hand soap, dish soap, dishwasher soap, and laundry detergent. But especially over the past couple of years, 
You've also had to grow as a human being during some of the most difficult times in a generation, through political strife, through economic crisis, through a global pandemic that has brought sickness and death, friends and loved ones, to ongoing attacks against our PETA siblings and elders. We're still forging our way ahead through these dark times, and my heart goes out now, especially to all of our siblings in India, where new strains and global inequality have led to some of the biggest outbreaks ever seen, as many people here in the US seem to have moved on. You have had to grow up very quickly, juggling school, work, family, and life. And while these times have felt like some of the busiest yet, with yet another Zoom session always around the corner, they have also reminded us of the importance of our relationships, of slowing down, and of taking care of ourselves and those around us. Dark times lead to better days ahead. And if you hold on to the lessons that you've learned during the past few years while holding on to community and hope, you'll be well equipped to move on to a bright future. I wanted to share a couple pieces of advice that I have learned from my own work. Much of my recent research has focused on the historic Japanese American neighborhood of Little Tokyo in Los Angeles. I have been intrigued and inspired by the incredible history of arts-based activism in this community. Here, people have used the arts for community building 100 years ago. Uh, art was used as a tool during the 60s and 70s during the civil rights and anti-war movements. And there have been creative expressions recently that have spoken out against anti-Muslim, anti-Black, and anti-Asian racism. Today, folks have also used the arts as a way to organize, build political power, bring in more stakeholders, and fight against gentrification for their place in the city, suggesting that urban art can do more than just drive up real estate values or look pretty. This example has reminded me of the importance of two things. First, continue to exercise your creative muscles, even if you aren't one of the lucky few who can find a job that perfectly matches your passions. As you move away from the experimental space of the university and into the working world, you will have to be more intentional about creating space and time for creative pursuits. Most of the artists and activists who are deeply evolved in Little Tokyo have some other day job that pays the bills, but they also think of themselves as artists and have vibrant creative practices, ranging from literature to painting to music to graphic design and beyond. These pursuits give them a richer and more meaningful life experience, broaden their connections with others, and keep their minds sharp. I think of my friend Scott Oshima, who works full time at the Japanese American Cultural and Community Center, but who also has an extraordinary place based practice that has led them to initiate urban street performances and documentary photography projects, resulting in the publication of two books, and they're just getting started. Sometimes it is even better to keep your creative practices your own and do them during your own time rather than giving them over to your employer, which can lead to burnout and diminish the pleasure and joy of creation. Second, wherever you end up, whether it is staying here in Tucson or moving back home or starting a new life somewhere else, seek out community and plug in. After witnessing horrifying violence against Asian folks over the past year, we are reminded of the importance of taking care of each other. There have been inspiring and intrepid young people who have stood up to provide our elders car rides, protection on the streets, and money for medical bills. And in my conversations with folks in Little Tokyo, one of the biggest needs is new leaders who can plug into community organizations as current leadership ages out. I think of Kathy Masaoka, one of the key figures who fought for reparations after the forced incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II. She expressed that the thing that gave her the most hope for the future were the young leaders coming up who bring their own vision and voice to the work of building community in Little Tokyo. These elders have built something up and want to hand you the tools to keep on building. This is an exciting opportunity for you to give back and to find meaningful ownership over our shared future. Now, I want you to return to that joyful memory that I asked you to think of and hold on to from your time here at the University of Arizona. Do you have it? I am willing to bet that for most of you, this memory is one that involves other people. Experiences that you have shared with friends, 
or in participating in clubs and group activities. These are the memories that live on and give meaning to our lives. When time feels like it passes by in the blink of an eye and we are left wondering how we got here, these memories are the ones that ground us and give us shape to our journey. And these are the memories that are so hard to make after graduating from college without a community that you can plug into. So when you go out into the world and step up to take on leadership roles in your neighborhood, in Asian American organizations, in the communities that you call home, you will not only be giving back, but you will also be giving yourself the gift of friendship, camaraderie, and many more memories to come. I wish you all the best and my sincerest congratulations on your achievement in graduating today, class of 2021. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Jonathan J.N. Chrisman for that wonderful speech. Now I would like to welcome one of our student speakers for the night, Tia Hunt. Tia Hunt is a graduating senior with a major in electrical and computer engineering and a minor in mathematics. Tia has been involved in the Asian Pacific American Student Affairs and the Asian Pacific American community since her freshman year. During her time at the university, she has served on the executive board of the Filipino American Student Association as the president, vice president, and historian. In addition, she previously served on the APASA board of directors and was a former marketing intern for APASA. Tia currently serves as the marketing student assistant for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, where she has contributed much to the movement for Asian Pacific American studies at the University of Arizona. On a more personal note, Tia Hunt has served various roles in my life and the lives of many other students in APASA. She is a great mentor, role model, and icon. Many students look up to her as an older sister as she has served as a role model in terms of her stellar academic record, outstanding extracurricular involvements, and pleasant social interactions with others. Tia has made my college experience at the University of Arizona worthwhile, and I am so delighted to be introducing her to all of you today. Please help me in welcoming Tia Hunt. Thank you very much, ladies, for that introduction. Um, I am honored to be here with you all today at our Lotus Laureate graduation convocation. First and foremost, I would like to thank our families, friends, faculty, staff, and community members for joining us this afternoon. It is a pleasure to look out into the audience and see everyone's screen names. Most importantly, I would like to congratulate myself and my fellow graduates for making it here today. For this speech, I put just as much effort as I did for my final assignments. So when I started writing this speech last night, I figured I should share my secrets to success. But honestly, there are times when I still question how I ended up here. So instead, I want to tell you a story Four years ago, plus or minus some, we first started college here at the University of Arizona. I myself was a timid freshman who was eager to get involved. So that fall, I attended the club fair. I remember walking to every booth and giving my email address to any club I thought would take me. You name it, the Neuroscience Association, Engineers Without Borders, and even the Quidditch Club. A few of them I actually joined, but when I walked up to the last booth, I noticed something. The people who were at the booth looked like me. It was a rare sighting for a girl who had lived in Tucson her whole life. Growing up, I had never hung around others who shared my Filipino heritage besides my own family members. I didn't even know what being Filipino meant. So when they told me that there would be lumpia at their first meeting, I had to ask, what's lumpia? I asked a friend to come with me to that meeting, but at the last minute, they said that they couldn't make it. So I mustered up some courage and went to that first meeting by myself. I sat near the front, thinking it would be a small group. A few minutes later, everyone else started showing up. Filipino time, what can I say? All at once, I was packed into a small room full of boisterous college students that I'd never met before. I'll be honest, I didn't talk to anyone that first meeting, but I couldn't help my awe at the fact that, for the first time in my life, I was in a room of people who looked just like me. It was in that room that I discovered for myself what it meant to be Filipino American. The next week, I attended their second meeting. When I found out that there was an open position for a historian on their executive board, I applied and the rest is history. 
But I tell you this story to share this. If I didn't find the courage to go to that meeting, I would not be giving you all this speech today. Actually, I'm not entirely sure what I would be doing if I hadn't found APASA. For the past four years, the Nugent Building has been my home. I would come here to this space to eat, sleep, do homework. I even felt a little disrespectful for not taking my shoes off before coming inside. For some of us, APASA is that refuge, that port in the storm that is the UA campus and college life. This past semester, I tried something else for the first time. I took a class in Asian Pacific American Studies. I'd like to take a moment to thank Dr. Asaki for responding to my relentless emails this semester. In all seriousness, Dr. Asaki has been one of the central players in ushering in the new APA Studies minor, which was just announced last month. To me, taking this class represents both a privilege and a responsibility that was fought for by those who came before me. The creation of APASA was itself an act of resistance by students on our campus. I personally have learned so much about our shared history of challenges and triumphs through this course. When we graduate from the University of Arizona, our diplomas will indicate our degrees and our majors, but it will not merely express all we have learned through our time in college. There is so much more to learn beyond the classroom. As Aristotle once said, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And it's true, in the never ending journey of developing your identity, you will continue to learn more about yourself and your heritage. I hope that each and every one of you reaches your Asian American consciousness. Like many of us, this degree is for and because of the family members who emigrated here to provide for us a better life. Today, I honor my Grammy and grandpa in the audience who immigrated from the Philippines to the United States for their children and their grandchildren. The world is a scary and dangerous place, especially for us right now. In these challenging times, I am grateful to know and be part of a community like ours. Eventually, we will have to leave this place that we call home. It is sad, but it is true. When we all go out into the world and eventually go our separate ways, I hope you hold tightly to your roots. Take with you all you have learned during your time here, the confidence to be a leader, the knowledge that you are not an imposter, the willingness to do what's right, the mental grit and determination to achieve your goals, the capacity to empathize with others, and above all, the drive to pursue your passions, seek fulfillment, and redefine success. Fellow graduates, I'd like for you to take a moment and really reflect on my next question. What gives you a sense of belonging? I have spent a large part of my childhood struggling to find my place as an Asian American. I have been in spaces that made me feel too Asian and spaces that made me feel not Asian enough. For me, APASA is that place that has affirmed my purpose and identity as a second generation Filipino American. So now, when someone asks me, where are you really from? I can point to APASA and know that it will always be home. Class of 2021, congratulations. You did it. Thank you very much, Tia, for that wonderful speech and for making a significant impact in the lives of many students in APASA and the Wildcat community. Next, I would like to introduce our other student speaker, Diane Saez. Please give a warm welcome to Diane. Diane is a graduating senior with a major in physiology and a minor in biochemistry. Diane is committed to be a healthcare professional and has the goal to become a primary care physician. Diane's involvements on campus include serving as the current president of Prehealth of PAMSA, a resident assistant at Yavapai Dorm for the Apita Scholars Theme Community, and a research assistant at Sonoran University Centers for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities. Diane has dedicated a lot of time and effort to supporting the advancement of Prehealth of PAMSA's mission and goals as the outgoing president of the organization. Throughout her undergraduate career, Diane has advocated for the health and wellness of the APEDA community and her peers by initiating and participating in health-related events, serving as the APASA student staff and working as the APEDA theme community resident assistant. 
Living on campus, Diane has showed resiliency being the liaison for campus happenings and aiding in events despite the dangers of the pandemic. During her time as a student leader in APASA, she has served as an example to many students and a wonderful ate or older sibling to her three adings or younger siblings, including myself as one of her adings. Diane has given me so much guidance and strength throughout my undergraduate career, and I'm so excited to see what lies ahead for her and her future endeavors. Please help me in welcoming Diane Saez. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the honor of having me speak today as a graduating senior alongside Tia Hunt. I'm Diane, and I start and leave you all with a message of gratitude today. I am grateful. I am grateful to once have been the person I was four years ago when I came to the University of Arizona for orientation with my parents. I am grateful to be the person that I have grown to be before you all. And I'm grateful to be the person I will be in the future already. But focusing on now, I am grateful to have been your peer, your coworker, your study buddy, your ate, your adin, and your friend. And I am at awe at all of you graduating with me and to those continuing their college career. When my feet touched Tucson and I grew accustomed to life here, my ultimate goal was to make myself proud. And it was a challenge. And as students, we forget to thank ourselves. We need to thank ourselves that from the difficult moments and even from the triumphs we have faced as students to remember to thank ourselves that we made it through and learn from it. This past year has been a testament to our resiliency. As an Asian American and part of the Apita community here at the University of Arizona, our family and friends have faced wreckage, violence, and loss. Let us acknowledge the injustices in our everyday lives and let us acknowledge our hurt, frustrations, and sadness. But let us cultivate what can sprout from it. Let us be the change our community needs and let us be the person that a community needs in the places that we touch. We have asked each, each other how we can support one another, and so let us continue to do just that. Let us be grateful for our experiences and for each other, and let us also honor our unique Apita heritage. And so tell yourself you are thankful, and tell your family and friends that you are thankful for them too. For my 2021 graduating class, let us walk with gratitude and share our gratitude as we move forward. Congrats to us and thank you to the class of 2021. It's been the absolute best. The next portion of our program is to honor the graduating class of 2021. Kenny and I will announce each student's name in alphabetical order by their first names. For this ceremony, graduates were given an option to pre-record themselves or share their remarks after we call their names. Please join us in honoring each graduate's accomplishments. Alisa Atrero. Alisa graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education. Alisa's plans after graduation is to start teaching after school while obtaining her master's degree. Unfortunately, Alisa is unable to make it today to share any um, remarks. Um, she is sub-teaching for um, today. Next up is Christina Huynh, Biochemistry and Nutritional Sciences with a minor in Spanish, Bachelor of Arts and Sciences. Christina will be gaining cl clinical experience this summer alongside a registered dietitian, then apply to apply Nutrition Master's Program at the University of Arizona. Dahlia Lise. Dahlia Lise will be majoring in nursing with a minor in Spanish, graduating with a Bachelor of Science. Dahlia plans to work for two years at a local hospital, then get their Doctor of Nursing practice to serve as a nurse practitioner. Next up, Danny Dong, majored in physiology and minor in critical languages, Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Danny hopes to become an EMT and apply for medical school. 
Danny Bartolome, majored in physiology, minor in Spanish and biochemistry, Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Danny plans to take a gap year to search for other opportunities and eventually plans to apply for medical school. Diane Faith Aya Saez, majored in physiology, minor in biochemistry, Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Diane will take this opportunity to study for MCAT and plans to apply to med school, which would put her towards her goal as a primary care physician. Diane, I believe you would like to speak. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you. First of all, I am grateful for my family. My parents immigrated to the United States to provide for me and for my siblings. And they have taught us to work hard and to work smart, but to do so with kindness. Second, I am grateful for my apostle home away from home, especially to Kenny, who has been a wonderful mentor. Third, to my Prialta Pamza family, in which we have been an advocate for our health for the Apita community. Fourth, to my foster couple Amelia and my three audience, Lady, Fabi, and Jada, who will pave their own road to success. And lastly, to my fellow 2021 class. And I especially want to thank Norman, who's been the greatest pillar of support in my life. So thank you for everything that Apasa has given to me and also my time being here at the U of A. Thank you. Dustin Nazi. Graduating with Management and Information Sciences with a Master of Science, Dustin plans to continue to be involved and serve in the APA Community Council. Next up, Janice Wong, Finance and Management and Information System, Bachelors of Science. After this graduation, Janice will be focusing on being happy as she transitions out of this university. Next, Jason Marquez, Operations and Supply Chain Management, Bachelor of Science. Jason plans to take a graduation vacation in San Diego and return home to North Cal. Jason would like to speak to share some words. Thank you guys. Good afternoon, everyone. I have so many thoughts in my mind right now that I need to put everything in this letter that I wrote. Throughout these past four and a half years, it's crazy to realize how time could just fly by. I remember the instant my parents left me to start my college journey, I couldn't help but cry and unconsciously lose my dorm keys, pain. I thought already what a start to college, um, I thought already what a start to college, boy was I not ready. <laughs> uh, eventually I did get out my training wheels, um, when I knew there had to be change. It all started when I joined FASA. Shout out to Adrian Seaball who never gave up nudging me to join. My growth started there and it all became history. I want to thank my closest friends, especially Sinigang who always inspired positivity and vibrance every single time. Please teach me to swim and let's get McDonald's sometime in the future. I also want to thank mentors, Professor Mendel, Max and Kenny, especially who all motivated me to build confidence, strength and courage to lead and guide the way for others. Huge love to FASA and APASA for also building a home away from home. And finally, my, my family, my parents, my brother, and my Lola, my pride and joy, my day one inspiration and support systems, I cannot thank you enough. But to my mom and dad the most, thank you for always believing me and always believing that your son could do it and never giving up on him for so many times and being patient with me. And again, thank you to everyone here and congratulations to um, FASA. And no, to everyone, congratulations to the class of 2021. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Next up, Jenna Vasquez, Neuroscience and Cognitive Science and a minor in East Asian Studies, Bachelor of Science. Jenna plans to pursue different medical professions and continuing to work on her music with her group called Dolce. She wants you to follow the group on YouTube. I also believe that um, Jenna has a pre-recorded video that we would like to play. Hello, Lotus Loria, and hello, everyone. It's Jenna Vasquez. 
I am incredibly honored to be one of your graduating seniors of 2021. I'm so sorry I can't be there with you guys tonight, especially with everything going on, but I would like to take a few moments to say a few thanks to the people who got me here today. So to God, my family, my friends, and all my mentors and advisors, thank you. Thank you for all your support and all your effort into helping me achieve my dreams. And until we can all see each other, I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye. Judy Tram, Molecular and Cellular Biology, minor in Biochemistry and Neuroscience with emphasis in Neurobiology, Bachelor of Science. After graduation, Judy plans to dedicate the time for medical school with the goal of being a pediatrician. Next up is Kenneth Lee, a double degree, first degree in Biochemistry and Molecular and Cellular Biology with a minor in Mathematics, Bachelor of Science. Kenneth's second degree is in Physiology and Medical Sciences with a minor in Chinese Language, Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences. Kenneth will continue with a master's program in Molecular and Cellular Biology here at the University of Arizona. I believe that Kenneth would like to speak and share some words. Are we able to do that? Yes. Hi everyone. So I would like to thank um, my parents for supporting me. Um, I also want to take, thank my mentors like Dr. Kunemi and Dr. Parker for their guidance and support. I want to thank Apasa for giving me a community that I can be a part of. And lastly, I want to thank the class of 2021 and all the friends I've met along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Kenneth. Next we have Kimberly Soriano. Kim graduated with a Family Studies and Human Development Bachelor of Science with a minor in Childhood Development. Kim plans to work with registered behavior, behavior technician with kids with developmental disabilities before going to grad school to become a board certified behavior an analyst, analyst. Unfortunately, Kim is unable to make it today's event. Kobe Saldana. Physiology and minor in Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science. Kobe will be working on gaining more clinical and research experience in preparation for medical school applications. I also think today Kobe would like to speak and share some words. Hello everyone, thank you all to my family, friends, mentors, and faculty for all the support. This wouldn't be possible without you all, and I owe all my success and accomplishments to all of you guys and everything that you have done for me. And special thanks to everyone in APASA, my pre alpha PAMSA family, and my underscore family for the amazing memories and for making this the best four years of my life. So congratu congratulations to all the graduates and bear down. Kyle Dong. Biochemistry and a minor in psychology. Bachelor of Science. Kyle plans to study for PCAT and hopes to get into pharmacy school. Kyle would like to speak and share a few words. Hi. Um, first off, I wanna thank my friends and family for getting me here to this point in my life. I wanna thank all the clubs that have helped me grow and meet people that I know will be lifelong friends. Shout out to Apasa, especially for giving me opportunities and speaking on panels to help not only for APA studies, but help prospective students. I wanna thank Crystal and Jackie for being the reason I ever showed up to Apasa in the beginning. I also wanna thank my M's, Ryan, Taven, and current MC, Lynn, for accepting me as they're on and teaching me life lessons that no matter how different we all are. And lastly, I wanna thank Anthony, Zach, and Don. Thank you for being my brothers helping me getting me through my toughest times and teaching me what it means to build a community. Thank you. So next up is Lily Ranji. Lily will receive their bachelor's degree under College of SBS. Noah Huang, first degree in dance and a minor, minor in pre-health thematic bachelor of fine arts. Second degree in East Asian studies with an emphasis on Japanese language. Bachelor of Arts. Next year, Noah plans to continue with an accelerated master's program in Japanese studies. Noah would like to speak and share some words. Hello. Um, thank you for letting me have this opportunity to talk really quickly. 
I am so thankful for my family who have supported me and have allowed me to come to the University of Arizona and to all my friends and to the professors that I've met along the way. Thank you for the amazing experiences and memories that I've been able to create with everybody. Thank you, Nola. Next up, Norman Wilhelm de Jesus de Baya, Neuroscience and Cognitive Science with a minor in Biochemistry, Bachelor's of Science. Norman plans to take time to gain more experience in the medical field and hopes to go to med school in the future. Norman would also like to uh, share some words. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to say thank you, of course, to Kenny and the rest of Apasa for hosting this Lotus Laureate and for giving the entire graduating class the opportunity to say a few words in regards to uh, who we're, who we're <laughs> who we'd like to thank. Um, personally, I'd like to thank not just uh, my pre health Pamsa family or my FASA family. Like I know you guys are totally my day one. I've been a constant support for me throughout my college career. I wouldn't know where I am without you guys. But I also like to give a special thank you to Diane, who's been a amazing partner for me throughout my college undergrad, as well as just my entire family in general. I'm uh, just being my support from day one from when I went to grade school up to today and like a special thank you to my mom as well who isn't quite here today with with me and my family but uh I know that like whatever I'm doing I'm always doing it just to make her proud and everything I do is to go for my own happiness and chase my own goals so thank you very much Apasa thank you to all the other graduates here today with me and also to the rest of the Apostle community. Thank you all. Next up, Rizel Esquerra Wong, Psychological Science, Bachelor of Science. Rizel plans to work as a physical therapy technician and a medical staff assistant at a medical health science while applying for physician assistant school. Next up is Ruth J. Ruth is also receiving her master's in legal studies and, and plans to continue a PhD under College of Education. Unfortunately, Ruth is unable to attend today's event. Ryan No. Information Science and Technology with a minor in Biochemistry, Bachelor of Science. Ryan is looking to land a full-time job in software engineering with a position at a company. Ryan is unable to attend today's conversation. Samantha Stanton, General Studies, Bachelor of Studies. Samantha signed on to work for Ecolab in their leadership development program company. Congratulations, Samantha. Sarah Learn, Marketing, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Next up is Shannon Kumar, Bachelor of Science in Public Health. After graduation, Shannon plans on taking a gap year and study for MCAT and apply for medical school. Hello, I just wanted to give a huge thank you and shout out to my parents for giving me the opportunity to attend the University of Arizona. And I wanted to thank all my friends and family that have supported me along the way. You guys know who you are. Um, and just to all the people I've met throughout my college experience, my coworkers, my co-interns, the friends I've made along the way, you guys have become family for me and I'm truly going to miss my undergraduate experience this was honestly the best time of my life and I made the best decision coming here um, so thank you so much and congratulations to the rest of the class of 2021. Steven Miyada Urban and Regional Development with minors in Japanese and Religious Studies Bachelor of Science in College of SES Stephen plans to work in Phoenix or Chandler area to work for the city of architecture firm as an urban planner. Congratulations, Stephen. Tammy Doe, Bachelor of Science in Nursing with a minor in Psychology. Tammy plans to start their career in nursing and would like to obtain a DNP degree to become a nurse practitioner. Tammy, uh, Tammy would also like to uh, make some live comments. Hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank VSA and APASA for being basically my home for the first half of my college career. Um, it was VSA that 
pushed me to be a leader in the nursing community in the first place. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you. Um, and thank you to all the supporters that I've met along the way and to my friends and family. Tia Sky Hunt, electrical and computer engineering with a minor in mathematics, bachelor of science. Tia plans to work full time as a software systems engineer for MITRE Corporation in San Diego, California. Thank you for letting me do my thank you live. Um, so I do want to give a big thank you, um, first of all, to Kenny and the amazing staff I've worked with throughout my years at APASA um, for just being wonderful mentors to me and for truly caring so deeply for our community. Um, I want to thank FASA, my familia for life, for helping me find my roots on campus and within my identity. I love you guys so much. Um, I also wanna thank my friends, my audience, um, my ates, and my partner Cameron uh, for their unconditional love, support, and the amazing college memories that I'll be able to tell my kids someday. Um, I wanna thank my mom, dad, brother, and my grandparents um, for all they've done to guide me to this point in my life. I love you both, I love you all so much. Um, and then a final huge thank you to APASA um, for being my home away from home these last four years and just being the little corner of campus where I truly felt safe and seen. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much and congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you, Tia. Virensit Fedora Wong, a double degree with the first degree Bachelor of Arts in Law and thematic minor Second degree is a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice. Berenzit plans to take a gap year and hopes to go to law school to obtain her JD degree. I believe uh, Berenzit would like to make some live comments. I, so I'm at work right now, but I just wanna thank you um, to my parents, my sisters, and the rest of my family for supporting me throughout my undergraduate career. And thank you to my friends for always being there and for all the memories that you created. Thank you to Acel and SACE for being great organizations to be involved in and also to the numerous opportunities I've been able to be a part of. And thank you to APASA and especially Kenny for being so supportive of my academics and also within my personal life. Congratulations to all the other graduates. Thank you so much. Vivian Chin, professional graduate student, chemical engineering, master of science, starting as a customer quality engineer at NXP Semiconductors in Austin, Texas. Vivian has pre-recorded her video that we would like to play. Hi everyone, it's Vivian. I just wanted to say a very special thank you to my family and friends for always believing in me, keeping me true to myself, supporting me, and most importantly, their overwhelming love. I would not have made it this far without them by my side, whether it was in person or in spirit. Thank you so much. I love you all so much. So that concludes uh, all of our um, uh, list of graduates. Um, and at this point, I would like to go ahead and provide um, closing remarks uh, for families and students who are graduating. This is a pre-recorded video, and I, uh, we will post this on our um, social media and our website um, over the next few days when, when it is prepared. So if you can give me a couple more, a few more minutes um, so we can uh, uh, prepare some closing um, for this academic year. Um, Congratulations to the class of 2021. Um, I also want to acknowledge that in this program, we have parents, families, your friends, and community that have taken the time to be with us in the ceremony via Zoom webinar. They have been supportive in every step you've made for you to be here, and today we celebrate and honor your accomplishments. Please thank them when you see each other in person, specifically for parents and family members. I'd like to acknowledge your support for your students. It is through your support and sacrifices that paved the way for many of our students to be here today. Students, as you continue to celebrate graduation in the next few days, please remember that your family will be there in every step you make as your support system. On behalf of APASA, I also want to acknowledge the APASA staff for tirelessly putting countless hours to make this year a success despite the current pandemic. 
Specifically, I want to acknowledge Harley Quinn, our grad assistant who started with the PASA this fall of 2020, Bernice Rodriguez, our administrative associate, not just for APASA, but also NASA, uh, the Native American Student Affairs, and the African American Student Affairs. Dustin Natty, who served as coordinator from March 2020 to January 2021. Uju Sampson for also stepping up this semester to help us out as our grad hourly. And of course, all of the undergraduate staff members at APASA, Lynn, Kevin, Lady, Ngan, Diane, Christy, Kim, Jenny, Lorena, and Karen. Without this group of staff, APASA wouldn't have been able to carry out our initiatives and support our students. I offer my sincerest gratitude to all of you. At this point, I also want to acknowledge our campus partners, specifically Dr. Ishani Deo and Rainy Vijay Vira, who held weekly office hours to provide one-on-one -on -one counseling and or academic advising respectively. And staff members of the Cultural and Resource Centers, the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, the presidential events and university ceremonies, specifically Tina Gargas's team, they serve a support system for me and Apostle staff while they continue to challenge our ways of thinking and how we support our communities that has been historically marginalized. I want to acknowledge the presence of the APA Community Council and the Asian American Faculty Staff Association, who are, uh, some of them are, are part of the participants and for those who cannot make it today. Both organizations affiliated with the university have assisted APASA and students in this room in their overall development and support to persist and graduate. Both organizations have also provided scholarships to some of our graduates tonight and assisted with the creation of APA Studies, a reality on campus. We are thrilled to hear that as of this semester, APA Studies, as mentioned by other colleagues, have been approved as a minor with College of, Humanities, College of Humanities huge support, along with Dr. Brett Esaki and Dr. Jonathan Chrisman leading these efforts. A shameless plug, because I know some of the faculty are here, a shameless plug that there are at least four courses that are being offered for next semester that will satisfy the APA studies minor requirements. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, uh, we have put together um, those announcements as far as which courses uh, will go towards the APA studies minor. This year has been very tough for our community. For over 15 months, our community and very own family have suffered many losses. The COVID-19 has impacted all of us. With the recent anti-Asian hate crimes at higher rates, I hope our community can come together for solidarity addressing the nuances and complicated histories we are facing. Our visibility is more important now to recognize and battle this notion of model minority and misrepresentation. Students, I hope that you follow suit in how you see yourself as a strong advocate for the needs of our community, as Asian Pacific Islander Desi Americans in your respective fields. This month of, a of May is APA Heritage Month. We pay tribute to the contributions of our pioneers and people who have put us where we are now. Our community is so diverse with various ethnicities, languages spoken, sets of beliefs and experiences. One thing to note is to be reminded that the month of Ramadan started a few weeks ago and will continue in the next few days. As we talk about solidarity, we should be mindful of our Muslim brothers and sisters who are fasting over the next few days. Graduates, as you prepare to close this chapter of your lives as an undergrad or a graduate professional student, you will start a new chapter of your own where you start fresh with an exciting series of events. I'd like to offer a quote from one of our living legends and Asian American activist, Helen Zia. 
in her words, use your voice. Don't ever feel that you are less than, no matter what people say to you. You have your full humanity and you should stand tall. And tonight, friends, I leave you with her words. Go on and continue to be a lifelong learner, but don't forget to honor our heritage and for tomorrow's world awaits you. Magandang gabi po. Have a great evening. Congratulations to all of you and bear down. At this point, this concludes our program for today. If for some of our participants, if you would like to take yourselves off mute and cheer with the rest of the graduates, please join me and make some noise. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, everyone. Yeah, yeah.